All right. He says, verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, so far, who's the subject? Who are we talking about? Say the word. All we know is that the word was with God. All we know is that the word was God. Right? But now look, slip down to verse 14. Still talking about the word. And the word what? Oh, and the word, whoever the word is, was made flesh. Was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only what? Did we answer that question? Who is Jesus? He's the only begotten what? Son of God. So the word was made flesh, and all of a sudden we saw the Son of God. Full of verity, Sister Martha. That's why I had to correct that, because, because that was an important verse. You, you were right until you were in the spirit, Minister Martha. There's your verse right there, John 1, 14. Full of grace and truth. That's why this church is called Truth and Love. Because Jesus, when he, when he came and he was made flesh, what did he manifest? He manifested the love and the truth of God. Amen. So it's telling us that's the big two aspects of God. Grace is love. You know, grace, there's two big aspects of God's love. What are they? Mercy and grace. Mercy, God not giving you the punishment you deserve. And grace, God giving you the blessing that you don't deserve. You put those two halves together and make one whole love. Somebody say, thank God for the love of God. And then you got to balance that with truth. And that's what Jesus did. So, what am I saying? Point number one, Jesus willingly was willingly made into flesh. See, it says, and the word was made flesh. That's talking about Jesus. But notice it said he was made flesh. What you have to understand is God doesn't make anybody do anything. Even his son, he said, he basically what you have to see is that he asked his son, would you go down there and become flesh? Here's a great thing I'll share with you. I woke up this morning and I, I seemingly wasn't thinking about it and it just came to me. I said, Ooh, this is, I know it's kind of graphic, but it, but, but it brings the point home. Jesus Christ always was God. At some point, the father, he was the son of God. The father says, son, Listen to this. I have an assignment for you that nobody else wants to take and nobody else can do. I'll say it again. Son, I have an assignment for you. Nobody else wants to take it and nobody else can do. Even if they wanted to take it, they couldn't do it because only you. This is, this is your unique assignment. When Jesus left heaven and came down and was made flesh, made flesh, do you realize how in the natural, how demeaning that was. I mean, it's like coming down. It's like you coming, you're the creator of everything, and you come down into this lowly uh, uh, portrayal of that which you've created. In other words, all of a sudden, God got to use the bathroom. I'm sorry, but I didn't bring it down like that. Can you imagine that? That sounds blasphemous to say that, huh? All of a sudden, the God who created the universe got to worry about the, the natural stuff we got to worry about. Where the bathroom at? Can you, I mean, think about it. You never think about stuff like that, right? God got to use the bathroom? That's what he did. He came down and, you know, and they didn't have Charmin. They didn't have uh, uh, Cottonelle. They didn't have none of that stuff. Like, I'm trying to uh, drive a point here. He lowered himself to the place where he had to deal with some stuff. He had to deal with the kind of stuff that we got to deal with, you know, my stomach is aching, you know, I got to eliminate. And he said, I'm willing to come down and become a low, be made flesh and have to deal with some fleshy stuff. That's a, that's a long way from glory. Somebody give God some prayer. That's a whole long way from glory to deal with that. So he willingly, he willingly was made in the flesh. The son of God, in other words, became the son of man. Point number two. Jesus willingly took on the form of a man. Not only did he, did he, was he made into the flesh of man, he took on the form of a man. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. He took on, willingly took on the form of man. The key word there is what? Willingly. Willingly. You're going to get this in a minute. Say willingly. willingly. Say it again. Say willingly. willingly. See, this is what he's trying to show us. We have to willingly submit to the will of God. 
Look what he says. Verse, Philippians verse chapter 2, verse 6. Now, you know 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. In other words, you take on the willingness of Christ. You take on the attitude of Christ. You take on the humility of Christ. Now, watch this. Verse 6. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. See, I told you. See, I told you Jesus always was with the Father. He's not a created thing. He was incarnated, not created. It said, but he made himself of no reputation. He, see, he made himself of no reputation. In other words, Jesus, after the Father asked him to go down there and become like a human being and have to deal with, have to drink and eat and eliminate and all that other stuff that human beings got to do, Jesus said, I will. He said, I will. So, so, something happened. Uh, you know, Reverend and I just celebrated uh, 31 years of marriage just uh, last week, right? Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Well, that, that yes. Praise the Lord by the grace of God. Amen. The reason I bring this up is because there's something that happened when we got married that you need to know. We, we didn't have the benefit of what you all have today, which is, you know, good premarital classes, but we did go to at least one premarital class. Uh, this young couple right here, I married them. That's my daughter and that's my son-in-law, and I married them. Now, I took them through premarital class. Several. There were at least 12 classes, I know. But when your mom and I got married, Spencer and all, we did not have the benefit of that. But there's one class that we had, and guess what I learned? I never will forget it from that class. The preacher said, it was a woman. She said, now when you get ready to get married, you were there at the wedding, huh? She said, when you get ready to get married, she said, I want you to repeat these vows, and she changed one word, and I never will forget it. The, the classic vow is, do you take so-and-so to be your spouse, right? And she said, I, I don't want you to say, I do. She, wants, she said, I want you to say, I will. And that stuck with me for my whole life because it's, it, it, it was a matter of my will. It's not a matter of how I feel. She was trying, she really, in that one little thing she did, she was trying to tell me that you're going to have to love this woman as a matter of your will. And she changed that line. So when I got up there and then when I act up, Reverend pulls out the tape, you know, and she puts it on the TV and she got me, she, she, you know, the children laugh because... I had a jerry curl on, and she had this crazy little uh, thing, little uh, headdress on her head, and they'd be laughing. But we'd be sitting up and coming, like, I will. And I thought about that, and I said, see, love is not how you feel. Love is an act of your will. Give God some praise if you receive what I'm talking about, okay? Ain't got nothing to do with how you feel. Because trust me, if you've been married, you understand, there's a whole lot of time you feel like jumping out the shit, okay? Amen. All right, so, so look, I said, Jesus said, verse 7, but he made himself of no reputation and he took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now, you know that other verse said that he was made in flesh. This one says he was made in the likeness of men. But the key to this verse is he humbled himself. He made himself of no reputation. In other words, God he work with you. He can, you keep wanting this blessing in your life, but the only thing that's holding you up is you. The only thing that's holding you up is your will. When you get like, that's why the Lord told us how to pray. He said, thy kingdom come, thy what? Will be done. You got to agree with God's will, and it's based on your will. Nothing's going to happen until you will it. And look what he says in verse 8. He says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Church, I got news for you. God has a will. Jesus has a what? Has a will. The angels have what? A will. Uh-huh, you get it now. And you have a what? A will. Everything that God is or made in his image has a will. This is a very, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really get ready to, to sell this point to you right now in a very graphic way, but I'm setting you up for this. God has a will. The Son of God has a will. The God the Holy Ghost has a will. The angels have a will. 
you made in the image and likeness of God have a what? Yeah. Have a will. Okay, now watch this. The question is today, what will you do? What will you do? In other words, you can will to follow God and obey God, or you can will not to. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if the angels have a will, that explains why we're in the situation we're in today, right? In other words, when God created everything, he decided before he made man, he created angels, right? And he gave the angels a what? Yeah. Come on, y'all, help me out. He gave the angels a what? Yeah. Well, there was an angel, and he was the anointed cherub. He was the praise leader in heaven, and he had a what? Yeah. And he had a will. I need some help. Young man, will you come help me with me? Come stand right here. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, this young man is representing Jesus. Now, the father said, you are my son. And Jesus, whenever the father said something to the son, Jesus said what? I will. You shake your head. Up and down. You will, right? Okay. And the father was very happy about that. But the father's a creator, so he, he wanted to create some more things. He said, I'm going to create some angels. So he said, young man, come on. He said, he said, come on over here. He said, I'm going to create some angels, and I like some music. So he said, I'm going to create this angel, and his specific assignment is to keep the, the praise music going in heaven. And to start out with, he asked this angel, oh, by the way, this angel's name is Lucifer. He's an angel. He was a, an anointed cherub. And he said, Lucifer, would you, would you keep the praise party going in heaven? And initially he said, yeah, you will, right? Okay, now stand there for a second. Lucifer initially willed to follow the Father. The scripture says at some point, iniquity was found in him. Now this is a deep, deep concept, guys. We can spend a lot of time on this. We can have some theological discussions about this. How can God create something? God's perfect. How can he create something that iniquity would be found in it? Well, the answer is simply this. God, in his infinite wisdom, decided that he would give Lucifer and the rest of the angels a will. It was not an imperfect creation. It was, it was the perfect will of God because God did not want any robots. God wanted them to have a will. So at some point, Lucifer, having a will, in other words, having the ability to make his own choices, said, you know what? All this time I've been, I've been doing what the Father says, I will, I will, I will. But today I think what? I won't. I will not. Say, I will not. Shake your head. Say, I will not. See, all of a sudden, because the truth of the matter is, when you have a will, it means you have the ability to will or to will not. Can't nobody, that's why we have all, all these divorces. Can't nobody make you stay married. In fact, watch this. You can be saved as long as you will to. You will not, and you will not. If you will not be saved, if you say, I will not, then you won't. So now, I'm going to show this to you. Watch this now. I told you that Satan had a will, and at some point he willingly rebelled against God, and he was cast down. Scripture, Isaiah 14, 12. Let's look at the scripture. Let's look at the scripture. You got it? Isaiah 14, 12. It says, how you are fallen from the heavens, O shining star. See, the shining, the original shining star was, was Lucifer. He says, how are you fallen from the heavens, O shining star, son of the morning. There it is. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. He says, for you have said in your heart, watch this now. What did Satan say in his heart? I will. I told you he had a will. In fact, we're going to count how many times he says I will. Watch that. You need to count with me. 
Number one. Well, every time I say I will, count it. Say it out loud. He said, I will go up to the heavens. He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will go up above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He turned to God and said, and said, hey, come on, step to me. He said, I can, he said, I can take this. He looked at God and said, I can take you. He said, I will not follow you anymore. Now y'all know I can take this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and the Lord said, and the Lord said to Satan, you shall be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Those who see you shall stare closely at you and watch you say, is this the man who made the earth to tremble and who shook him to love? Is this the man who caused everybody to fear? Everybody talking about the devil busy? The devil busy? And he said, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities? Who did not open the house of the prison? In other words, this is the man who had everybody bound? No, God said, this is the man that I threw down to hell. And somebody praised God for it. Amen. Amen. Thank God that he's, he's holy enough to play that role today. All right? Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen. What I want you to see is that God treats all of us the same. You have a will. You can, you can, you can willingly tell God to His face. I will not, I will not be praising you and coming to church and all that stuff. And I will, hey, I, I will, I will do my own will. And God said, okay, well, I'm gonna do my own will too. I'm gonna let you go to hell. But watch this. There's another way. Now here's the Son of God. Y'all looking? Here's the Son of God. And He said, you're not exempt from it. Did you notice that God always has an assignment for His sons? Nobody's exempt from an assignment. But you have to decide whether or not you're going to take the assignment. So now he comes to his son. He says, now son, we got a problem. Uh, I created that shining star, Satan. And uh, he, he, he decided he will not follow my direction. And I sent him down there to hell but I did allow him to walk on the earth. And you know that I made man. I made man down on the earth. And man was down there doing a good job. And Satan came up and whispered into his ear and told him <laughs> that he could will to disobey God. And Satan told him, he said, listen, he said, I've already done it. He said, I've done it. You can do it. You don't have to obey God. And the man said, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But then, then, the, then, then God said, while Satan was thinking about how he was going to, Satan was over there planning how he was going to get man, God said, it's not good that man should be alone. And he gave man this woman. And man was happy. Everybody was happy except Sister Weber. Anyway, anyway. And Brother Tucker. Okay, that's not his wife, that's mine. 